welcome to the Book Farm Podcast, a book club podcast started by two very bored pharmacy technicians looking for a hobby. Thanks for tuning in and let's get started. Okay, so reading A Heart and a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. Um, I'll just read the little summary and the little book thing. It says, from Seattle to Washington, D.C., Annabelle is running through mountain passes and suburban landscapes from long, lonely roads to college towns. She's not ready to think about the why yet, just the how. Muscles burning, heart pumping, feet pounding the earth. But no matter how hard she tries, she cannot run the tragedy from the past year or the person, the taker, that haunts her. Followed by Grandpa Ed in his RV and backed by her brother and two friends, her self-appointed publicity team... Annabelle becomes a reluctant activist as people contact her, connect her journey to the trauma from her past. Her cross-country run g- gains media attention, and she is cheered on as she crosses state borders, even thrown a block party and given gifts. The support would be nice if Annabelle could escape the guilt and the shame from what happened back home. They say it isn't her fault, but she can't feel the truth of that. Through welcome and unwelcome distractions, she just keeps running to the destination that awaits her. There, she'll finally face the miles of love and loss behind her and what still lies ahead. I stumbled a lot. but No, you're okay. So, currently, we are on chapter 10. Oh, I'm, I have read through chapter 10, and I think yeah. you have too as well. Mm-hmm. So it's we're kind of in the in the beginning of the book. There's about thirty four chapters, I think, is what Google said. Yeah, something along those lines. Three hundred sixty nine pages and like thirty something chapters. Um, so, like, what have been your key takeaways from the beginning of the book? Okay, from the first chapter, just kind of basically starts off running for sure because that's exactly what happens. Pun, lol. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But but yeah, she's at, um, she was at a restaurant. She just starts running. Something is upsetting her. It starts, she's upset by something and she starts running. We kind of get a little bit of background. Like she kind of talks about how, Oh, I don't even remember. Hold on. Because she, 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 I mean, mean, her mom calls her. So we know that, like, we learn that her mom is, like, kind of someone who's super anxious. She's freaking out when her mom calls her. Super overbearing and. Yeah, overbearing is a good word. Yeah, and we, we learn about Kat, but we only really hear her talking to Kat, her her alleged best friend. I don't know if it's alleged, but she that's what she says. Uh, best I would say friend. I would say it's alleged because I haven't I haven't yeah. seen where where Kat's actually there other than like you've pointed out like in flashbacks or she's talking about Kat. Like mm-hmm. she's not had any present dialogue with Kat. Yeah, and so we do. She does like kind of talk. Or imagine what Kat would say to her in this moment. Um, so, yeah, so she just came back from hanging out with her friends. So everything seemed normal to her mom until she just started running. She ran all the way from, where was she? Did she say she was in their their town? Is called, oh, I almost had it. I think it was, I have to find her town. What is she her even town? leaves the car. Like, yeah, she, she just her, goes. She leaves, she leaves the car. car and starts running. We learn that she's <laughs> a runner. Run. She learns that she's a runner. Uh, Cross country, I think, is what she yeah. does. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, her mother says it's PTSD, but we don't really know what that reaction is like what that PTSD would be from. So her mom's saying her running away is like PTSD. And we from what, what we like from what we gather, she's had episodes like this before. Right. Where she's just kind of done something dramatic and then she's gone back to her mom because she tells us, she tells the audience like this time it's going to be different. Like, right. Yeah. And did we mention her name? Her name's Annabelle. No, nope, we're horrible. We didn't mention the name. <laughs> yeah, no. her, the main character's name is Annabelle. 
Yeah. So I want to discuss, since we've already kind of mentioned that, like, her mom is overbearing. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to discuss her relationship with her mom because later on, so, so the general gist is she decides that she's going to run from, it's in, they're in California, right? They're, yeah, they're in town. Washington. They're in, no, she's wanting to run. State. She's, she's wanting to run to Washington, I thought, from Washington, California. She wants to go to Washington, D.C., but she lives in Washington State. So that's why she's heading to Idaho first. Yeah, because Idaho is just like that little panhandle of Idaho is just right next to Washington. She's okay. in Washington State because she talks about Seattle, I think. Yeah, I didn't go to elementary school, so I don't know my states of America. So. That's okay. That's Sorry okay. about we that. Can... <laughs> no, we can just... No, so she... <laughs> you can up and say she's in Washington State. <laughs> so she's running. Uh, she The general just says she wants to run 16 miles a day to get to Washington, D.C. in mm -hmm. five months, you said? Or was it like five weeks? I thought... No, I, it was over a month's, month's time. Um, over a month's time, was... okay. And so yeah. she starts She starts running, and she notices very quickly that, like, not only does running, like, she can run, yes, but she didn't pack any sort of supplies, like a body glide or any sort of, like, compression socks. She's wearing, like, a cotton shirt, which she mentions that has like rubbed her raw in some areas like she is not prepared for this at all um so i wanted to like i said i wanted to discuss the relationship with her mom because her mom sends her grandfather in an rv to follow her along the trail that she's running so mm -hmm. yes her mom's overbearing but obviously like she's not i would say i don't think she's the type of kid where she just runs and, like, nobody cares. So it's not that nobody cares about her, I don't believe. Right. Because her mom even packed her a bag and sent it with her, Grandpa Ed, and, like, has made sure that she's had somewhere to stay. But mm -hmm. her mom also has made a deal with Grandpa Ed to bring her back after they are done with Iowa or something like that. So After Idaho, yeah. I Idaho. She, she not Iowa. <laughs> Idaho. And yeah, Idaho. Um, yeah, she doesn't. She thinks that Annabelle's gonna want to quit. She doesn't want her to start something that maybe she she's not ready for. Um, I guess. But Annabelle, she's not ready because it was such a split decision. It was you know like a reaction to the PTSD. Um, which I think does she talk about that? I think she talks about it later on. What triggered her to start running? Right. She, she was at the restaurant. Yeah, she talks about, I think it was, like, a man that was kind of uh, creepy because, so I think, if I remember correctly, I think she discusses why she left the restaurant and then discusses that women have to, or not just women, but, like, you have to live in this world with, like, a preliminary caution. Mm -hmm. Like, she can't run at night by herself. She can't do, she, she's like, she can't go to the mall without feeling like somebody's, like, watching her. So, briefly, I think that what set her off was just the feeling of mm -hmm. that man in the restaurant. And then also another thing that we'll get to in a minute, which is the taker. Right. Which is mentioned pretty, pretty prominently. Mm -hmm. There, that's a running theme. Is the fact is the fact that she can't just feel safe with like flirting or anything. She just like not necessarily flirting. That's kind of a bad way to explain it. But like with she, she's you could tell she's pretty uncomfortable when it comes to people like trying to uh, hit on her. I guess she gets really uncomfortable with that. Um, which she talks about a lot about, yeah, she feels creeped upon a lot, especially, yeah, the taker, like we were talking about. Yeah. So I want, I want to, dis I want to discuss Annabelle before and after, or like not after, but like before this instance where it wasn't, mm -hmm. she was with Will, which is a, right. what, he's a kid from their school, right? 
their high school at actually he isn't from her high school she met him during one of their was it like a football game or something a um, cross he country was meet the, i think a cross country meet okay because he he was from an opposing school uh the opposing school and he's like from the rich neighborhood he's kind of like one of he but he's super sweet to her but his parents aren't necessarily approving of her and that's that's kind of what happened between them will broke up with her because his parents were like they weren't really approving of his relationship yeah. with annabelle it was they like was, a like a make out scene and then he was like hey yeah. My parents don't like you, girl. We can't be together. Yeah, that was exactly what happened, basically. They were, yeah. So I think that this this moment and then combined with whoever the taker is, because at this point in the book, we haven't really, we've gotten like some glimpses of how he's like a weird kid at school, but he's also been right, flirting right. with her. And so like mm -hmm. there's a scene like in, in art where he says like, you got some on your on your cute shirt like yes. some some clay and she's yeah. like oh my goodness like that like it, it, he she describes him as like a like a weird kid like a weird kid that you'd see in your high school and her friend right. cat yeah. in this flashback even says like well he's weird like your stomach's telling you that he's weird because your gut feeling is telling you like don't and and sure. when she Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. Yeah, like when sh she even brings up like a past time when she was in elementary school, like it was fifth grade. She there was a kid that had like a crush on her and she didn't she thought he was weird and creepy. Like she didn't really like him. She didn't like the way she felt when he was like talking to her, things like that. So she when she when she told her teacher, um, he told her, hey, it's normal for guys you. to have crush on you. Yeah, he just likes you. It's not that weird. And so she felt super guilty. She, like, it was like she was the problem. When really, it, it's not, I mean, yes, it's normal for guys to have crushes on you, but it's not normal if you feel that something is off, you know? Yeah, Your feelings I, matter as well. I do feel like this is a very big, like, theme of the book is, um, because in the summary, it says that it discusses, like, Me Too movement themes. Yes. And I can see that heavily um, because there's been, like, a lot of social media posts about how, like, younger girls are, are, are conditioned to believe that being, or not believe, but, like, associate rudeness with uh, flirting because, right. because people... Like, teachers and parents will say, well, he's just being mean to you because he likes you. So right. I think that that was one of the, like, key points there in that flashback was, like like you said, uh, regardless of whether she felt comfortable about it or not, it nothing was to be done about it because he just liked her. Like, he was just right. a kid that liked her. Yeah, and so that kind of has some symbolism with the taker as well because when she talks about the taker how he seemed just like a guy who liked her but she felt something was off and like like even when she got the valentine's day card um yes remember? yes it outside like, mm -hmm. and it was what did it say on it it said like it was something like she said like it wasn't like a cute like funny joking card that Will would have gotten her for Valentine's Day. It was something that she said was a little bit more real, like it actually applied to her. But the fact that in, that that thought of it like scared her. That the fact that like maybe he could see through her um, her facade because she's always talking about how she's perfect. She gets the perfect grades. You know, she's a really nice person. You know, like she doesn't understand why all this supposedly bad stuff has happened to her like, and she don't really she, know what that is but the scene whenever she not the scene what am i talking about this isn't a movie this is a book uh <laughs> she goes into the diner with her grandpa ed because it's her 18th birthday she's just crossed oh, yeah. the iron horse trail just yeah kicked its ass and right she 
then walks into the diner with Grandpa Ed because it's her 18th birthday when she finishes that. And her mom and her brother are there. Um, she kind when, whenever the dialogue between her and her mother happened, it's not like a I said. It's like a I I portrayed to her like that mm-hmm. I was happy. So right. it's kind of like a she's acting happy. She she does have a facade and it, it like you said it does hint on that that he can see through her which I think makes her feel vulnerable. Mhm. And you know vulnerability and the taker are kind of hand in hand uh words. So yeah, for sure. And yeah, so going back a little bit before so she had so we kind of learned that in the beginning after she runs she ends up going to a best western and she stays the night there she buys a hotel room with her what was it what money was it was it birthday money? her graduation money because she she's a senior money. and she's gonna graduate in may yeah so she buys a hotel room with that money and her mom comes, and her mom is livid. Her mom is not happy. She's like, um, this is just a reaction to your PTSD. You're not thinking about this. And her, But her brother is, like, understanding. So she has, like, a really close bond, bond with her brother. Her brother um, has packed her a bag and is yeah, like, hey, he did. I'm going to start you a GoFundMe. Your GoFundMe account's, like, raising, like, it, it has gone from, like, what, like, zero to, like, 600, I think? by the point yeah. that we're at like people from their town have uh, really started pitching in for her to do this run mm-hmm. they have and it's like so like the town and her friends and her brother they all know something that the audience doesn't so us as readers we don't understand why they feel that they understand that she needs to do this Um, most people that run cross country like that are usually doing it for a cause. So we don't know what her cause is, but we know that the taker is involved and we know that she feels somewhat responsible for what happened. We don't know what it was, but she does have this guilt going on. Um, but yeah, her and her brother are really close. Um, and something that we learn, which I noticed another theme was, um, she, she loves science. She she wanted to like yeah. be a scientist. Um and there's a, a theme of like she wants to escape this life she's in, which kind of is like maybe that's why she runs, trying to process what happened that we don't know. We don't know what happened, but she's trying to process it maybe and you can feel that all these flashbacks are leading up to that something, but we don't like know what that something was but she I noticed like there's a metaphor going on of uh like that she wants to be like an astronaut who can just escape the world and be where nobody else is which I I like that she built the author built this character to the point that she can use like metaphors like that of for her personality and continue them on which when I've because, like, I've read this book more than once. So when I first read it, I never, like, realized this science metaphors that she throws in there, too. Because that's how Annabelle is able to see the world. That's something that she likes. I just thought that was cool and I wanted to mention it. Um, but, yeah. Um, but after she stays at the Best Western, she actually had booked a bed and breakfast, was it? Yeah. Was it? A cheap, like, $42 a night bed and breakfast. Yeah, and it was kind of sketchy. She didn't really like it. There was, like, a lady that was going to do her laundry. But while she was there, um, the lady was, like, kind of, like, what the heck is wrong with this chick? Stand- and she standoffish. Asked, Thought she was, yeah. like, running from the wall or something. Yeah, and she asked for a pair of scissors because she's going to chop her hair off. Because the thing about Annabelle, she had, like, long, beautiful, dark brown hair. Um, she's, like, she's... A part Italian. It's pretty close because her grandfather was from her Italy, right? Where, yeah, from Italy. Yeah. He, so, yeah. Yeah, but she cuts cuts her hair off, all of it. Well, not like all of it, but a lot of it. And uh, 
a lot of people, I feel like that's a response that a lot of people have to trauma is you try to get rid of something physical, like cut something out of your life that's something physical. And she did that by cutting her hair, which I, I mean, cause while we're doing this, you can also see kind of the mental situation she is, like she's in, like her mother knows she's not okay. And that's why her mother is freaking out. Well, and it's not like a, like, I'm going to go get my hair cut. Like she's like crying in the shower. Right. And like, she's sad, like her. So she, she ran to the bed and breakfast, the 16 miles a day, which is what she mm-hmm. was talking about. And so like her heels are on fire, her, her calves hurt like, like hell. And like, mm-hmm. she's crying in the shower, cutting her hair. Yep. It it's you can tell that something really bad happened and she's trying to deal with it and she's struggling even though she talks multiple times about how she goes to her therapist and everything she likes her therapist too she doesn't really talk anything bad about her but she just says like she needs to run she needs to do this for a reason that we don't understand but that's she's saying that that's why she needs to because not the therapy is helpful but it's not really like helping her to overcome Mm -hmm. whatever had happened um so yeah that's a big reason why she's she's running she's it's also like like her mom keeps saying that maybe she's running from seth gregory which i don't know who seth gregory is have you seen that name and been like confused yes i've been like who the heck is seth gregory but I, I think he might be, like, a lawyer or something or, like, an attorney. But I don't really know. I'm not sure. All, all of the characters in the book are kind of introduced. They're all introduced in flashbacks, and you don't kind of – you don't really get a, uh explanation on who they are until after it's over. Mm-hmm. Um, you're talking about escapism, and I, I agree with – I agree with that, like, metaphor. I I just want to put out there that, like, while she's running and she's trying to escape, she's also, I feel like she's also doing herself a disservice because she's alone. You know, whenever, whenever we, like, have stuff going on in our lives, I know for me at least, when I lay my head down, like, to go to bed, you know, all, all this stuff, you're just thinking and thinking and thinking because it's quiet. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like she's doing herself a disservice by running or not k- kind of excluding everybody because as she's running, every time she runs, she, uh, you read a flashback. Like yeah. that's the pattern is every time she gets on that road and starts moving, there's a flashback and they're like mm-hmm. increasingly like her body's becoming physically exhausted, but so is her mind because she even says like, she has so so she has an exercise for like whenever she starts talking about whenever she starts talking about the taker mm-hmm. she has an exercise of just saying like stop but there was a point in the book where she like couldn't say stop because she was just so exhausted and so i feel like like i said like she's just doing a disservice to herself by excluding everybody out of the problem because she's just kind of making it easier for herself to get lost in those thoughts. Like, there's a moment where, like, she falls because she's just thinking so hard about all this stuff. Like, she trips and falls and, like, I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, she needs her support system. And her so- she it's not like she doesn't have one because she does. Yeah. But she feels this guilt, which is what I think is why she keeps wanting to separate herself from them because they're saying it's not your fault but that's not how she feels she feels like it is her fault whatever happened that we don't know um she feels like it is her fault and I think that's kind of like even though I feel like maybe they're right sorry um, no you're good my cat was even like scratching at the door she wants to get out okay hold on okay give me just a second. <laughs> Okay. 
Um, yeah, so I think it's mo- it's that guilt that's kind of, I mean, she needs her support system, and I don't think she realizes it, but she's trying to separate herself because I don't think she feels like they understand that she's blaming herself. Um, I think they just think that yeah. she's maybe grieving or is upset, but I don't think they quite understand that she is blaming herself for what happened. So. Mm-hmm. Because she keeps talking about it as if it is her fault. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, I just interrupted you. No, you're good. Um, So I know that I know that you've read this book before, but I haven't. So I want you to just kind of humor me. What do you think has happened? Like what? Because we haven't read all the way through it. We're only on chapter ten. So what do you think has happened? When I first read it. I I remember I remember thinking like what what could have happened that nobody is blaming her for but she feels like it is her fault. I was very confused. I was always hopping around. I I did I was not thinking what it actually was. But um I maybe thought that maybe she was uh either like raped by the taker or something. I wasn't sure But that was kind of what I was going down the lines of. I thought maybe something like that had happened. What did you think happened? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, like, sexual assault or, Mm -hmm. like you said, like, rape, unfortunately. Um, Because I know that in a lot of instances, people do blame themselves for that. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, but nobody else blames you. And you're saying that you think that Seth Gregory is like an attorney, so maybe that could tie into it. But like at the same time, and then he, so she says she calls him the taker, right? And and Mm -hmm. taking Mm -hmm. is not like something to be used lightly. I'm thinking either, you know, uh, sexual assault or maybe he just took her virginity. Right. The taker. You know, maybe pulled at the stunt like like Will and kind of mm-hmm. took it and then left. You know, but yeah. I don't understand how Seth Gregory would come into that, but I'm sure that we'll find it out. Right, and she's running toward, yeah, because I, mm, she's running to Washington D.C. and her mom had said like, "Well, what are you gonna do when you get there?" And she was all like. I don't know. I don't know. I just need to go, mom. But her mom's like, well, if you're thinking you can just like, I think she said something along the lines of like, if you could just walk into a courthouse and tell some big wigs how they can fix, you know, whatever problem that needs to be addressed. Maybe, yeah, apparently it's big enough that like there needs to be, she feels like there needs to be law or something. So that's what I'm thinking um, with, with that, that her mom said that, like, you're going to walk into a courthouse and tell these big wigs, whatever. She's like, that's not going to happen. But that's, I mean, when, when you're kind of struggling like that, you're like, well, she doesn't know there's a possibility, you know, but yeah, well, she's also 18. And I mean, like, yeah, wants to run. Yeah. Running is something she actually likes to do, so um, it's it's like it's how she's coping right now. But it's also yeah. she, it also feels like she's doing it for a cause. Hence, like the GoFundMe and things like that. There's a reason. Yeah, see, I thought I thought it was weird, like that they set up a GoFundMe, like for what? Like Go GoFundMe for running away, but. Uh, what, uh, you know, that, that just proves that there has to be some sort of cause, something that she wants to implement into the rest of the the state, so. For sure. And that's and, and that's what I was kind of confused, too. Like, like, she just ran away, and now these... But then people start supporting her, and you're like, well, why are they supporting her? Like, she has these people supporting her. They're giving money, you know? And then I think even her... Was it her brother set up? No, her friend is it Emma and Zach? Is that their names? They're no, like her Olivia, Olivia and Zach. I think Olivia is. and Zach. Olivia and Zach are like her publicists. So they're like you know 
giving like news articles and updates on her and well and they're like doing. college kids majoring in like olivia's majoring in like marketing and mm-hmm. oh uh zach's managing the financial situation right like the finances yeah. he's a finance major and they i think they just told her that they set up an interview with someone in a in like a high in school a high school for a high school paper to talk about they just say talk about what happened and why you're doing this you know something like that um and she wasn't very happy about it but she realizes but yeah i should probably do it um yeah and another big thing is her 18th birthday comes up right mhm um and like the night before her grandpa grandpa ed is his name he uh he had gone over to dinner at because they were in a state park, right? The trailer park. They were, they were parked park. at like a vacation trailer park or something. Okay, yeah, and because she met him like in the middle of the state park, because the Iron Horse Trail was part of the state a state park, right? So like other people were there. Were they not? Well, there was yeah. one bigger, right? Anyway, that's not important. You can cut that out. But the point is, is she they were camping and there was like her grandpa was like flirting with this lady across the it was like across from them and she made cinnamon rolls for her birthday and then when they went made it to idaho they were at a diner it was like the big you you mentioned this it was the it was like the wheel wagon wheel or something yeah, I was like something some, like that. Some but hole he, in the wall. He ends up inviting this late, this random lady that he met the night before, and her grandson, who happens to be Annabelle's to be, age. Yeah, to and the she, diner for her birthday, and she is not feeling it. She feels she's like, Grandpa, are you literally like trying to set me up right now? Like I am not in a place for this. Um. But it's never said. It's just like she is mad at him. And you can, t- but you know, because it's in Annabelle's perspective, that that's what she's thinking. But, well, and she's then like, really upset. Like, another reason I say that she's just kind of really like apprehensive towards men, like how we were talking about earlier, is because he, he smiles at her and like says happy birthday. And she associates this smile with like, this is like what does she say? Like it's a smile. Let me see. Let me find it. Cause I was like, girl, he just be smiling at you. Calm down. Right, but she's like freaking but out. But I understand. Him. Like, let me see. Yeah, cause his name is Luke, and he's not. He's not really like she does. He doesn't give her any creepy vibes that we know of. I mean, she's only met. He's him like, like a, once. He's like a hippie guy. Yeah. And he hasn't really done anything except those things, but it's, she's really, like, scared of, like, guys having crushes on her or thinking she's pretty. That's kind of, like, what it feels like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Grandpa Ed seems to be finding new love. (laughs) He's flirting with the hippie grandma lady. And her, when Grandpa told grandpa ed told her mother you know hey we're i'm not bringing her back after idaho like we're gonna do this her mom was very upset and her mom actually understood and was upset at grandpa ed too for bringing luke over there she was all like are you kidding me are you trying to set her up right now you know she's not in anywhere healthy to do this Um, i think we might have hit all the points that was pretty good um so yeah, that was the first that chapter one through ten of a heart and a body in the world. Um, we will be covering the next twelve chapters the next time around. Is that correct? Yeah, we'll be covering the next twelve chapters um, on our next upload. Um, so yeah, so if you if you wanted to follow along, um, yeah, we'll be reading the next twelve chapters. So to chapter twenty two. Or through 22. Yep. But thank you for listening slash watching to our book farm podcast episode one. Sorry if it was a little rough. You're still learning. And 
yeah that's it